Yeah. Toasty Robot. The inaugural episode of the Toasty Robot podcast. (laughs) (laughs) We'll see. Hopefully this becomes a thing. Uh, You know, basically just like every other fucking podcast, we're going to just cover the news and chit-chat about it and inform my friend here, Tyler, about things that he doesn't know, because he doesn't know anything. (laughs) Well, not, not just... Not... I don't know everything, but I know some things, but not enough that's to the no, common person, I suppose. That's perfectly fair. I don't know everything either, but I, I damn sure know more than you. I mean, so, uh, you are always surprised anytime I do know something. <laughs> <laughs> that's for sure. Okay. Uh, let's see. First, a uh, couple of things. Um, this is interesting. So you are familiar with the Retron 5, which, for the love of God, we've got to get one. Uh, so in Japan, they are getting this new type thing, kind of very similar to the Retron 5. There's no announced date for this coming to the U.S. or anything. There's not even an announced date for Japan yet, but at least it is confirmed there. So, uh, alright, now check this out. This thing is cool, okay? This thing plays Famicom, Super Famicom, Mega Drive, and PC Engine games. The, 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 the cards, the, the turbo graphic cards. But who has those laying around? Though? Well, I mean... I mean, you know what I mean? I, I don't know. Like, no, that's that's fair. Like, who has those just laying around being like, oh, I wish I had something to play them on? You know, if you've got the cards, you've probably got the system, too. Well, I think it's a great... I think it would be a great machine to have, though. Definitely. Yeah, totally. But but so so what kind of... what Like, the reason that I would be interested in this, not for the PC Engine stuff, obviously, but it still also plays the uh, Super NES, NES... You know, uh, uh, our region PC Engine, which is the Turbo Graphics, plays those. Uh, Game Boy, Game Boy Advance, Game Boy Color, Genesis, and the Super Graphics. This thing is like a Swiss Army knife, dude. It is kind of cool. I. So where where do you stand on these consoles that are just like these all in one kind of emulator Android based machines? Well, I think they're great. I think it's a great idea, you know, especially if, like you said, if you have these things laying around, for example, I know you have a, a, you know, a decent NES collection from what I've seen, and uh, I I think it'd be great to be able to launch those again on a newer, you know, where you can use, like, high definition instead of using the component cables. Yeah, yeah, it's, I don't know, Um, all in one, I get people who have, like, like, a ton of consoles hooked up and whatnot, like... It's, you know, just to be able to, to, like, unhook all that stuff and consolidate it into one thing. I, I mean, I definitely see the appeal of this, like, for sure. <laughs> you know, that actually reminds me of, you know, how home audio systems, how they, they have uh, it have the head unit, then you have the DVD player, and yeah, you have, I like, mean, all that, and the equalizer. It's, it's so just so stupid. It's, but just, it's just a mess. <laughs> I mean, you, you look at the setup that I've got in on my entertainment center. I've only got, I've got three consoles hooked up to it. And then the surround sound stuff. And it's like a million chords. <laughs> like, so I could I could only imagine the headaches that, like, these hardcore collectors have to go through to have, you know, oh, I gotta, I gotta have my SNES hooked up. Gotta have my Super NES. Now, see, that's the only thing that about, about these things. Like, so they haven't come out with one yet that can play, you know, all your disc-based games. Which, you know, that would be awesome as shit. Like, here's, a, here's the Retron... Six or whatever, you know, wipe out the cartridge stuff, and here you go. You can play PlayStation One. You can play Dreamcast. You can play Sega Saturn, Sega CD. Like hell, even like I don't know, like Jaguar seat. No, who wants to play? <laughs> no one wants to play. No I, I don't know about you. But no one's dying for an alternative way to play Jaguar games. I That's... mean, I haven't really have ever have seen a Jaguar in my entire life, but just you know, watching videos of other people and stuff like that, I don't think I'd ever want to actually. I don't know if I'd want to touch one. I mean, I would like to touch one, but I don't know what game I would actually honestly play well, on hey, it. If you, if you want, if you want to touch a Jaguar. We can emulate the experience by going into the litter box in there and just grabbing a giant cat turd, because <laughs> that's about the... That's kind of harsh, though. <laughs> that's about what it equates to, dude. That thing was garbage, but but no, that I think I think that would be cool. I would get more use out of that, because, I mean, while I do have, like, a bunch of retro games and stuff, like, I mean, I kind of... I stay with the times, you know? I want to play, like, the best, newest thing, like, as soon as I can, and... I, I, I don't know, I, I kind of say that 
sort of loosely just because I think it would be cool because I still have all my you know PlayStation 1 PS2 games stuff in there that would be cool because since they take out the backwards compatibility of the newer consoles now like I don't want to have all that stuff hooked up anymore to have the one thing that could just do it all I mean that that's what you want that that would be totally rad and that I think that's the biggest selling point of this box completely is the fact that it's all in one you don't have to worry about a bunch of cables running around I mean yeah. I'm surprised like some of the people I've seen that have setups that they, I'm surprised they don't have multiple TVs per, you know, how many consoles. Yeah. I mean, I even have an well, input that's switcher. Why, that's why I went out of my way to get to to get my hands on some older tube TVs, just because the newer con uh, the, the 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 older games look like crap when you play them like all stretched out and not properly resed up on a new TV and what. I mean, everybody knows that. Like, it's not that's not that's not how you want to play that stuff. So, it. I, I get the appeal. I don't necessarily think that something like that is for me. But I I totally understand it. It's it's pretty cool. You would think, though, with our technology that's built into these TVs, that it'd be able to... I mean, I know it's uh, an aspect ratio thing, but you'd think it'd be able it's to just, use smart just, technology to be like, yeah. oh, look, we're going to clear up these pixels for you and it's it's all good to go it's yeah just, it's i know just it's that's it's easier it's said just, than it's done just, it's just the refresh <laughs> rates on stuff you know when i play those old games i want to see every single fucking grimy pixel you know <laughs> i don't like how how that stuff looks like all smoothed over and whatnot so i guess i kind of that's why i like you know the hd remakes of old stuff like that like that's cool that's totally cool i mean i understand why some people are turned off by that because you know oh it's not how it's supposed to look you know that's not it's not what i grew up with Be like, okay no it's not but fuck you most of those are pretty cool like straight up yeah uh all right whatever enough about retron stuff uh next thing so i am not a huge fan of racing games at least not, you know, the ones that seem to be dominating the market right now. I your, love your, your, games. your Forzas, your Gran Turismos, eventually. Uh, recently released that uh, Project Cars, Drive Club, like, whatever. Like, those games are fine if simulation racing is your thing. That's cool. I like more arcade racers. Burnout, Need for Speed. The, I don't think we're ever going to see another Burnout game, unfortunately, because those guys now are working on Need for Speed. You definitely have to mention Ridge Racer. That's actually, oh, absolutely, yeah. I think out of all the arcade racers well, I've ever played, I think that's that's my... That's kind favorite. of the godfather of it all. Really. Unfortunately, I think that one is going to be hitting the water here soon. Well, and just because that series has fallen off real hard the last few years. The last couple of Ridge Racer games were just ass. But, uh, <laughs> so, but speaking of Need for Speed, though... <laughs> Uh, I definitely felt an increasingly large hole in my heart this past year with no Need for Speed. There was, there has not been a Need for Speed since uh, 2013's Need for Speed Rivals, which is a pretty, pretty rad game. All yeah, said. I mean it was cool. Yeah, yeah. It, totally cool. But you know, it's still the the two that came before it, the uh, the Criterion made uh, uh, the, the the remake of Need for Speed Hot Pursuit and then the remake of Need for Speed Most Wanted. Hot Pursuit was pretty cool, yeah, too. Yeah, <laughs> Most Wanted, though, was like... That game was like Burnout Paradise 2. Like... See, I didn't. I haven't played that one, so I'm, I'm not sure. Well, there is no Burnout Paradise 2. That's just the thing. Like, Need for Speed most wanted was like if they made oh, another if burnout they, oh, hop. Okay. Yeah, no, like another burnout paradise that game kicked ass and then they followed it up with rivals which was good in its own accord it just it wasn't the same and then the, the next year came I was like alright let's see what's gonna happen new gen consoles new need for speed I'm psyched no need for speed they took a year off I was kinda bummed that has been an annual franchise for pretty much as long as I can remember. So no Need for Speed last year. So I, I'm not losing much sleep over that, though. Honestly, I mean Need for Speed's okay. No, that's but fine. I get. I, that. I think where I lie, I'm I'm more of a Gran Turismo fan. So I guess that's where yeah. I kind of. I mean Forza is actually pretty awesome. Forza Five is, oh that's great. It, it feels good. It, it feels like what Gran Turismo has been trying to do for the longest time. And we'll see. Um, I think I think you'll eat your words when. Uh, Grand Turismo Seven comes out. Yeah, it's, and it's definitely going to be in my library, and I'm 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 totally going to talk about it when I get it. I have to <laughs> okay, because right, I, I that, love that's it. That's fair. So, anyways, uh, today EA came out and said that uh, they released the first teaser image 
for this the, the new Need for Speed. Uh, supposedly, tomorrow, Thursday, as of this recording, is when we're getting the first reveal of the new Need for Speed game. And I am stoked. Not a huge racing fan, like I said, but something about those games. You know, a fun game is a fun game. You know? Yeah. Whatever you're into. I'll play a fucking Barbie game if it's fun. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I, <laughs> I don't really care like what the subject matter is or anything like that. Like, if it's fun, I will play it. Need for Speed is fun. I really missed having one last year. So here's what's kind of cool is some some uh, uh, some savvy folks on the internet, NeoGaf and, and and whatnot, took the uh, the teaser image that they revealed for the for this new Need for Speed game, and ran some filters over it and whatnot, and they discovered little hidden things in this image that weren't easy to see right away and ha that has led to speculation that this is going to be a third Need for Speed Underground game. Oh. So Need for Speed Underground, if you don't know, was like the first like open world Need for Speed. Which was, yeah, but that was cool. Which was awesome. It was, you know... The, I the, remember the, those days. Those games, those games came out in, like, the, the, the heyday of, like, the, you know, the original uh, Fast and Furious movie and all the... Uh, the the hot lust for import cars and whatnot that were going around in the early mid two thousands and stuff. All thanks but, to Fast and Furious. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm not gonna lie. But, like, maybe not all thanks to it, but it certainly helped for sure. But uh, <laughs> Need for Speed Underground, uh, I, I I played the first one way more than the second one. Which console did you play that? Uh, one oh, on? PlayStation Two. Actually, I played uh, I played that one on the GameCube, and that was definitely kind of strange, but. It's strange to play anything on the game <laughs> that wasn't made by yeah. Nintendo. But no, that's 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 fine. That's cool. Whatever. It was kind of strange, but after I did play the PS2 version, I was like, oh, okay, you know. Like, well, I mean, it's, I think at that time it really just kind of came down to controller preference, really. I, yeah, and actually, it felt better on the PlayStation Two. Well, you I mean, know, I, to me, most things did because just because I like that controller. Well, yeah, uh, I mean, that was the controller I was pretty much born with. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, right. Like yeah. when I came out of the womb, I was holding a PlayStation but, uh, controller. Anyways, Need for Speed Underground, totally cool. Speculation now that this is Need for Speed Underground 3, which would be fucking rad. I'm in. If that's what they're making, I am totally in. Ghost Games are the, the developer of this. They're made up mostly of uh, ex-Criterion guys who worked on Burnout. Uh, they, they're a studio created just to work on Need for Speed for EA. Which one did Ghost uh, the, start with? They started with Rivals. Rivals was... Okay. The first one that they made. So, good foundation there. That game felt solid. It was cool. I just didn't think there was enough to it. That's that's really my only complaint about it. I thought it was awesome though, but just not not a lot to it. Wait a minute. Who did it before? Was it just straight EA? It was. Ju uh, well, I mean, they were partnered with somebody, weren't they? It's, I, they they had like several internal development teams that were working on Need for Speed games, and uh, uh, they when they bought Criterion back in the day uh, for. Uh, Burnout 3 was the first uh, Burnout game published by EA because before that I, I want to say it was like a claim or some shit like that before a claim went down. Um, uh, I had so, no idea so, about that. So the, the, there was always, you know, Burnout versus Need for Speed, you know, which is better. And then the same company was making both games all of a sudden, you know. So that was kind of cool. And then under the, under the EA moniker is when the best Burnout games came out. Burnout 3 was awesome. Burnout Revenge was awesome. Uh, there was the uh, Burnout Dominator, which a lot of people, a lot of people did not play because it was a, a Burnout game that was only released on the PlayStation 2 real late in that console's life cycle. But it was, it, I thought it was cool. It was really cool. Except for the fact that I'm pretty sure the only music track in that game was some fucking Avril Lavigne song <laughs> with like 30 different remixes. <laughs> it was fun. They even did a couple of Burnout games for the uh, for the PSP that were pretty badass. Oh, I actually cool. want to say Burnout Dominator released on the PlayStation 2 and the PlayStation on the, the PlayStation Portable, the PSP. It was the same game, basically. But that game was cool. A lot of people didn't play it. And then there was no Burnout for a little while. And then Burnout Paradise came out, which is hands down my favorite racing game ever made. That game is kick ass 
Man, is it kick ass! <laughs> it's I, so good. I need to definitely pop that one in. You one do, you do, man. Because I, I stopped. I literally, I played the first one, and I, I haven't played any of them since. Burnout. I, you yeah. only played Burnout One. Was oh man, that yeah. game is like baby town frolics compared to what came after. Man, Burnout Paradise kicked ass. That game is so good. That was the first platinum trophy that I ever got on the PS3, just because I could not stop playing it. Man, I was into it, dude. That that game was rad. So to those, Burnout Paradise was the last proper Burnout game. They came out with uh, there was like a downloadable like kind of like a puzzle game that was Burnout, based off of the crash mode that was in the older games. It was just trying to build up crashes. It was like a top down thing. I mean, it was it was cool, but it wasn't fucking Burnout. That's How for did sure. That work. I I'll I'll show it to you sometime. It's it's pretty interesting. It's not the worst. It's just not you know it's not Burnout. It's not what I wanted. And, and, I, and I was like, all right, I, we need the, the next Burnout game. Like, come on. That was not fucking what I wanted. So, as far as I know, they pretty much just dissolved Criterion into, like, they, they, they cut that team down to, like, something like 15 people, man. Like, they were, they, they went down hard. Like, it, when in EA's, like, massive consolidation that they were doing. And, uh... I was like, well, that sucks. But then they announced that the next Need for Speed game was being made by the Burnout guys. And I was like, oh, that's rad. Okay, I'm in. And sure as hell, that game kicked ass. The next two games were made by Criterion, the Burnout guys. The The next Need for Speed game after that was the Need for Speed Rivals. That was made by Ghost Games, which is this new studio that EA had in association with Criterion. It wasn't straight up their game. Oh, so they just partnered up with them? On yeah, the and, and, and I... Most of the, I think, the, the, the OG blood that worked for Criterion is now in that Ghost Games studio, and those are the guys that are making this new Need for Speed. So, basically, you've got the Burnout guys making Need for Speed Underground 3, if that's what this game turns out to be, which, that would be awesome. I hope that's what it is, and then hopefully they follow that up with, you know, Burnout Paradise 2. They should they need to make another Burnout game, man. It's the problem with the Burnout franchise. It never outsold Need for Speed, mostly because the cars in Burnout were licensed cars. They were all like just generic models, sort of like how Ridge Racer and some of these yeah, arcades. Yeah, yeah, they're but, just but they're made okay. they're made up cars. That's perfectly fine. Then yeah. the reason they have to do that is because look at a crash in a Need for Speed game, and then look at a crash in a Burnout game. In a Burnout game, those cars fucking blow into pieces, man. They, but that's what makes that game. Yeah, that's what's so awesome, right. but I think there's some sort of uh, affinity to, you know, from these car manufacturers. They, are not, they don't want their actual cars shown having the shit blown out of them, you know? <laughs> that's, not the, that's not the image they're trying to put out No, there. but I find <laughs> that perfectly okay. Yeah, it's fine. You know, they, actually, I, I'm sure the masses would even agree with that, too. Yeah, because all the made-up cars in Burnout, you know, they look there are real world cars that look a lot like them. You know, you can kind of guess what they're trying to ape with the ones that they make up. Like, I'm totally fine with that. That's perfectly fine. The problem is, you know, Joe Sixpack, who goes into a store to buy a video game, is like, I want the one that's got the <laughs> Civics in it, you know? I want to drive a Toyota around. <laughs> they, they want they want the real cars, you know? Joe Sixpack. So, that's why, you know, the Need we have, for Speed... We have enough of those around here. <laughs> yeah, right. That's why the Need for Speed is always outsold burnout i think is because you know real cars versus fake cars so what i think they need to do is they need to make a need for speed game that's just called need for speed colon burnout you know just combine the two franchises into one thing that would be totally rad they've got somebody has got to get off their ass and work with these car manufacturers and let's show those things Blowing up, man. I mean, how how hard could that be to negotiate that stuff? I mean, well, I, this is this is EA we're talking about here. Well, dude. I feel like if you throw them enough money, that they'll be like, yeah, that's how you hey, solve. That's, every, right, that's how right. you solve everything. You just throw a little bit of money at it, and they're just like, oh, okay, we're happy. That's fine. Yeah. And I think people are super hungry for a Need for Speed game right now too. So uh, we'll we'll see we'll see how all that pans out. Um, E3 will definitely tell us what's coming. <laughs> yeah, well, th hope. that's just the thing. We, uh, apparently, we don't have to wait for E3 for the reveal on this game. They're supposedly revealing this tomorrow, which, you know, if that's to follow suit, like a lot of other reveals right now, these pre-E3 announcements about announcements of their E3 announcements. <laughs> <laughs> like, come on, dude. 
about an announcement. Sort of like, what were you telling me the other day about Nintendo yeah, doing Nintendo, that? Yeah, it's how Nintendo announced what they were going to show at E3. It's like, oh, here's an announcement of our announcement of how we're going to announce our E3 announcements. Like, <laughs> dude, like, God. And everything is doing that now, and I'm so sick of it. There's trailers for movie trailers now. You know? Like, just show me the stuff. I... That's sort of like when I saw the Doom... You showed me the Doom trailer. Yeah, the Doom thing. Okay, That that, totally pissed me off. That is the the, (laughs) the thing for the new Doom. Exactly. That is a teaser for a trailer, dude. Like, (laughs) fuck you, man. Just come on. I'm I'm a really big, you know, Doom fan. And I'm sitting here like... I saw that I'm like, oh yeah, this looks great. What? I was so excited to show it to you. Because, like, before I even watched the video, I sent you the link. Because I was like, well, whatever it is, I'm sure he's going to be interested in it anyways. Even so if it I, was so, seven, so, you know, seven seconds, and yeah, I'm sitting there... Hey. I don't even think it was that long. It, most of that was logos. <laughs> yeah. So I sent you the link, and then after I sent you the link, I'm, I'm sitting on the toilet there, and I was like, all right, well, now I sent him the link, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to watch the video now. Like, I had about enough time to rip out one good wet fart before that trailer was over, <laughs> which is all that trailer was, was just one good wet fart. Like, I do, I felt like I let you down send, no, no, you, sending you no, that link. No, at the same time, like, <laughs> but you know, I kept replaying that video over oh, and over, yeah. and I was like, come on, show me something different this time. Like, oh, there's something I, I had to miss, because this is all you showed me. This is a bunch of crap. Yeah. Like, I, just... I don't know. Like, I mean, but, you know, either way, it gets me, it, I'm a little hyped, you know? I mean... I just hope that, um, I don't know if it was just how they filmed, I mean, not how, I they, filmed, know. how I, they put all that together, it looked kind of funky. Like, it looks like a, like, they just reincarnated Doom 3 all over again, it was like, oh, like, we did, we're just gonna put in extra shading, because this game is totally about lighting uh, effects Yeah, so that's, that's the thing, even though it was only seven seconds, nothing about that looked like new-gen stuff, but, you know, I... I hope that's just a testament to how early in development that game is, which once again makes no fucking sense, dude. Like, I don't, I don't know. You know. We'll we'll see. I am not gonna turn my nose up at it in, in, until I actually see something. I am super excited for whatever the next Doom game is gonna be. Oh, definitely. And I I have to have it along with all the other all the other ones that well, I. Well, I think that's a must <laughs> have for a lot of people, man. I'm yeah. I'm in. I'm excited. I, I can't wait to see what that is. But, uh, oh, yeah, fuck your trailer of a trailer. Like, suck a dick, <laughs> dude. I'm I'm over that shit. Hardcore. That is the stoop... Now, I really want to know if people actually well, watch especially, these things. No, see, especially, here's the thing that, like, really is going to suck, because that it, when they finally do show that game, it's like... Like, when the proper trailer, you know, I mean, you know it's not going to be this year. There's no feasible way. Definitely. And I'd say next year holiday at best which might even still be a stretch dude oh definitely i think that you know they haven't even released the beta yet for that no that came in with wolfenstein that came with wolfenstein yeah which was like a fat sticker on the front of the box you know doom beta like all right and of course people there were some people that just that bought that game just for that beta. Oh, you know, I'm, there there uh, was there I, was a handful, I'm yeah, sure. You know, I'm, at I, least. And, and I think that they were happily surprised by the fact that that Wolfenstein game turned out to be pretty okay. So they didn't really lose so too much. They didn't, they didn't lose. It was kind of like I I don't know. You know, there's precedents for that happening in the past. You know, the uh, original Crackdown on the Xbox 360. Uh, that game shipped with the uh, the beta for Halo 3. You know, that was. So Crackdown sold fucking millions because people wanted to play Halo, you know? I mean, good marketing strategy, Oh, definitely. absolutely. Turned out Crackdown was actually kind of okay, but then Crackdown 2 came out and it had no Halo beta in it, and people were like, well, fuck that game, you know? And turns out Crackdown 2 wasn't that good anyways, but, you know, whatever. And then uh, I think the most infamous one of that is all, uh, of all was the uh, Metal Gear Solid 2 demo coming with the original Zone of the Enders on oh. PlayStation 2. I, I bought I bought that. that. I bought that for the Metal Gear demo, okay? I owned that game for a month before I even booted up Zone of the Enders. That Metal Gear demo was 10 minutes of content at that. 
But, dude, I mean, just like any other Metal Gear game, you could get lost in that for days. And I did, just messing around, trying exploring every little nook and cranny in that game, fucking with the physics on, you know, the bottles on the counter you could shoot and <laughs> things like that. Like, just lost in it, man. I was so excited for that game. And then one day I was like, oh, yeah, shit, right. I actually bought a game. Through in Zone of the Enders, that game was totally rad. Like, so you did okay on it. Yeah, that. I did perfectly fine. I imagine my surprise, and then and then you know, Metal Gear Solid Two came out, and I actually kind of didn't care that much. I wanted to play more Zone of the Enders. Like, that game was awesome. That game was totally awesome. But like, yeah, that is an interesting thing, though. You know, sell this thing that might not have as much hype behind it, but include, you know, access, like, a beta or a demo to something that you know people want to help drive the sales. Like, I get it. Yeah, you're right. That is a brilliant marketing strategy. And that even happened with uh, Final Fantasy, uh, that Final Fantasy uh, beta. That they had. Uh, well, maybe it wasn't a beta. But it was a demo. That's what it was. It was a demo. What game did that come in? That was just recent oh, too. I feel oh, oh, that uh, oh, the Final Fantasy Type O. Yes, yeah, yes. yeah a, a shit game that no one wants. But by the way, here's playable Final Fantasy Fifteen. Yeah, hell yeah! Well, I guarantee that every single sale that game made was because people wanted to play Final Fantasy Fifteen. It's become so popular that, like I was just telling you the other day, they're releasing a version two point of a fucking demo. They're updating <laughs> and patching a. Demo, dude. Like, I want to know, why are these developers making a 2.0 of a demo? Yeah. Like, what are, well, are they wasting their research and development? Yeah. Oh, we're going to, like, tease them a little more. No. You know, just, actually, just we should be just... Stop putting your time and effort into making your dumbass demo better and get to work on the fucking game and get that thing out the door already. That game was announced... This is because remember this is now the rebranded version of Final Fantasy Versus Thirteen, which was supposed to be a companion game to Final Fantasy Thirteen, announced back in two thousand six, dude. Oh, went we're, that far? Yeah, this um, is this. We're in twenty fifteen now, and Versus Thirteen is nowhere to be seen. I mean, granted, it's not called that anymore. It is now officially Final Fantasy Fifteen now, but still, like, holy shit, man, that's like up there, like. Duke Nukem Forever levels of oh, development yeah. time oh, right there. Gosh, you know? the, the, I mean, uh, at least Duke Nukem Forever wasn't a total flop. I mean, it was cool. It, I, but I, I know that they that's spent not, way it's too much. Not a good game. Yeah. That that game sold out of uh, sheer morbid curiosity. You know, like I think a lot of people had followed the journey of Duke Nukem Forever. And we're and they were they you know they like, I got I got to see this shit through to the end, man. I mean that's why I did it, you know. Like 1996, I think they announced that game. I remember seeing the first screenshots in a PC gamer, and I'm like, oh man, like I love Duke 3D, like the new Duke game, you know. It, I got stuck on a boss, and I was just like, this guy is way too hard, and the loading <laughs> times are pissing me off. Yeah, no, that, that and game, I even installed it on my hard drive. And game, I was like, cool. That game right. was that game was totally terrible, but I think everybody should have it in their collections purely for, you know, what that game meant and what was going on. You know, like you had to see that through. That that game is a, a milestone in the industry, man. Not good. I mean, not the worst thing ever, but you know. It's there's a, a very interesting story surrounding that game, which you know someday I'd like to read a book about or something. Somebody needs to write that. Interesting, interesting thing there. But yeah, the fucking Final Fantasy fifteen, dude. It's kind of the same thing. Like that game has been through hell. I would totally love to see kind of like a post mortem on that game after it's out to just you know give a straight rundown of everything that happened there. Like. What was the deal with this? Why was the development so fucked up, you know? Why did the director, like, come in and leave that game, you know? Like, what? what is the deal? Like, what was that? That was my phone. Oh, that's rude. Mute that shit. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, I, I want to know what happened with that game. Unfortunately, you know, this is Square Enix we're talking about here. This is also Japan, and there no one over there is really prone to divulging that kind of information. They don't want to ever make it look like they fucked up, you know? You'll never see that. You'll never see... Is this how they're, like, trying to just try to be, like... Okay. It's just going to sweep it under a rug, because when that game comes out, it's going to sell millions of copies, and everybody fucking knows it. I think it's just because it's got the name Final Fantasy in it, That's, honestly. That is the only reason. That is the only reason. That's why people bought, like, 
Final Fantasy Chronicles and shit on the GameCube, which was a stupid game, but people bought it because, hey, this says Final Fantasy on it, you know? Well, I guess, you know, I could say the same thing about Gran Turismo. Uh, I mean, I will say Gran Turismo has always just... fallen against the same lines. Like, I know what I'm getting yeah, when I buy you, this thing. Right, we, like... Without right. even a second look, you know. I mean, yeah. where you look out there is they haven't ever made a bad Gran Turismo game. I mean, there's been Gran Turismo games that have problems for sure, but there's never been just a straight bad one. You can pretty much bank on the quality of that series every time, if that's your thing, you know? There's not, I, I don't know, there's not a lot of, of games that I can just, you know, assume are going to be good. I don't know, I could... Anything that Rockstar makes, I think, you know, like Take Two, like the Grand Theft Auto guys, you know, anything with their name on it, I feel like sight unseen, I could purchase that game and have a good experience. Definitely. And, you know, I, I don't know if it's the sandbox that gets me interested. I, mean, not even that. I, I mean, waste way too even... much time in that game to actually play the game, but the game is fun. That's fun, yeah. And, that, and that's that's the main thing. Yeah. I mean, yes, I will pick up on the story and I'll get sucked into the story and I'm like, Oh look! I went, you know I got a rocket launcher. It'll blow up a car. Okay, cool. You know, this <laughs> makes me feel better. All right. So I don't know. I, uh, Grand Theft Auto Five was the first time that I never, I never did that in a Grand, Tur in a Grand Turismo, in a Grand Theft Auto. <laughs> wow, game. that, oh, that would have been pretty awesome though. Because <laughs> yeah. Grand Theft Auto, Gran Turismo. Like you get out of the car and like have a rocket launcher, and, like just you know what? <laughs> yeah, except when you shoot it, it doesn't do anything because Gran Turismo couldn't model fucking car damage. <laughs> oh no, it, it modeled car damage, but model like this like a weird no no remember, remember that was a big problem with the gran turismo games back in the day that they didn't model car damage well even even still now they do they model it but it looks funny it, it's not it's not like it's what not, i call like forza, forza 4 or, yeah. or forza 5 grade like you scrape a wall it shows it, shows it. it yeah. like your front your front end is like sagging i just, I just think know? the guys that make gran turismo are so obsessed with like you know car porn basically is what i like to call it they're just they they don't they don't want to like sully the beauty of it you know they don't want to they don't want to they're very reluctant to damage these glorious machines that they idolize so much. I get it. Whatever. That's taking but, away from but the gameplay. But if game I, if I smack into a wall at two hundred miles an hour, I want to see the bumper fucked up. You know. Well, this is supposed <laughs> to be a simulation racing game. I feel like the simulate should, it. Yeah. Yeah, like make it happen. Make this thing do what it's supposed to do. And I think. I think in this kind of race, I think Forza is actually winning. Not only for car damage, but you know, also like I just I, I find I find, I find the mechanics in the Forza games very approachable. You know, yeah. that game teaches you how to play it. Gran yeah. Turismo is like you need this license. Go. You didn't get it. Oh, Start yeah. over. I totally. Oh, I, you know how did I forget about that? It was just so awful. Yeah, I just, yeah. I tried to block that out of my memory because it's so gone off. Yeah, I don't know. I, I, and I, that was one of the big things that turned me off for that series back in the day. That's why I want to play Burnout because it's like hit start. All right, you're hauling ass, three hundred miles an hour. Everything going around you is a blur. Wreck this guy. Oh look, he just exploded. That was badass. Let's do it again. You know, it's like instant gratification. I'm in, man. I love it. You know, I... You'll come around to my way of thinking eventually. Oh, yeah. Definitely. I think you like Gran Turismo because you like cars, but you you don't know what good gameplay is. <laughs> well, debatable, but I'll agree with you there a little bit. Definitely, uh... Okay, all right. Well, anyways... <laughs> what the hell were we even talking about? What started that? I, I don't know. What started that tangent? I don't know. Do you just want to <laughs> the next topic? Whatever, man. We went off topic real hard. Whatever. <sighs> New Need for Speed coming out. Maybe. I don't know. Is that where we oh, went Oh, yeah. That, actually, I think that's where I we don't, were. I don't think that's... Oh, no. We totally went on a completely different <laughs> tangent because we were talking about uh, why people buy games, and that's for, like, you know, the demos and... Premiers. Oh, well, whatever. I, don't, I mean, that wasn't even something I intended to discuss. But, hey, that's what you get here on the uh, Toasty Robot Games podcast. Uh random non sequitur bullshit hey it's fun okay anyways uh <laughs> something about uh xbox one just got a price cut in japan and china because it is not doing well anybody that bought one over there i believe are treating it as a 500 hundred dollar doorstop which you know that's actually perfectly acceptable <laughs> at this point i'm sorry i'm just i'm i'm kind of so all right well it's still it's selling 
well. I'm not in a, the, in I mean, it's not about the whole fanboy issue. It's the, I what mean, are they doing? You, you like know? what you like, and that's what you like. I mean... Well, it's not Honestly, just that. I think like, I think at the at this moment, Microsoft has the better games lineup than Sony does. Straight up. Well, I don't know if that's going to sell more consoles though. I mean, well, I know they're dropping the price. So because here's they're the thing: it, it's still selling incredibly well here in the states. Uh, the Xbox One actually outsold the PlayStation Four last month in the U.S., which I I kind of get why there was things to play on it at the time, you know, but. The, the, the fact of the matter is they're still so far behind in that race against Sony. Like, so far that I I honestly don't think they can catch up right now. You know, even dropping the price as much as, as much as they are, you know, there's still so many more PlayStation 4s out there in the channel that just, you know, word of mouth alone is going to keep the sales up of it. You know, odds are you know more people right now that own a PlayStation 4 than you do an Xbox One. So, you know, when you go over there to play those games or you bring your buddy along that doesn't have either console, you know, he's going to, he's got more exposure to PlayStation 4. That's what he's going to want. That's where his friends are. And it's just going to keep snowballing. And they got such an awesome head start, man. I, there's, there's, I don't think there's any way Microsoft can catch up unless they're like, oh, by the way, Xbox One, hundred dollars. Go, you know. Well, I think what makes me kind of itchy about the whole ordeal is the fact that I mean, selling the Xbox One without the Connect was that helped. That that, is that what, definitely helped. That has helped their sales. A, and it, and it's interesting that you say that because uh, uh, head of Xbox uh, Phil Spencer recently just reaffirmed the company's commitment to Connect. Uh, what? Which is funny, yeah, because you know they still. Make a Connect, you know. There's still plenty of people out there who have an Xbox One with a Connect that they're doing nothing with. It's a, uh, I don't know. They're gonna use they're gonna use the Connect to make money off of it, which of course is you you know we were discussing um, that they're selling it as you know it's it's a separate you know device altogether, which is how it should have been to to in the beginning, like the 360, you know, it's just, I get, I get what they were doing, you know, they were basically saying, you know, if every, like, that's why the games on the Kinect were so bad on the 360, because there was no one willing to devote the, the time and resources into making games for this thing that you couldn't guarantee sales on, you know, you put one in the box, guarantee everybody's got one, no, there definitely. you go, you know, you've got your sales right there. It's just, I don't know, the this renewed, I, I it, it's very doubtful that this renewed interest in, you know, motion controls is going to help the sales of that console outside of the U.S., you know. No one bought an Xbox One saying, yeah, connect, <laughs> motion controls, that's what I want, you know, every, uh, too many people were burned on the 360 with that. Now, you know, it's like, it's like voice functionality and things like that, you know, that's all, that's all cool and well, but I don't think that was the selling point of that system for anybody. I, I just, when I look at one, of, you know, I look at an Xbox One and I, I look at like a, I feel like it's like a 90s. VCR with a disc tray in it. And yeah, and, 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 that thing's you know, a monster. It's so big. And and not not just that part, but I, I feel like it's a motion control DVR. Like I just I feel like yeah, there's just not people, really any use for this system. People right want to play games. People want to play games. And you know it's I'm and I'm this is not me trying to paint one console better than the other. It's in this particular aspect for sure, it's just as dry out there for the PlayStation Four right now as it is the Xbox One. You know, yeah, that's, that's you get your occasional like AAA release. Like we're down to about one a month now, which is a fucking huge bummer compared to how it's been in in years past. And then you know your slew of indie games. Like, yeah, actually, which is fine, you know. I've had some some of my best experiences in recent memory with playing games have been with these indie games, but like I Minecraft. did not buy this. <laughs> like what? Like Minecraft. Like Minecraft. Like yeah, fuck you. <laughs> no, fuck Minecraft. But like I I. And I feel like I can speak for a lot of people on this, man. We we didn't buy these expensive new gen consoles to play these bullshit little indie games. You know, we want the big budget. And, you know, I can't stress this enough, dude. There's nothing wrong with the indie games. Like I said, they, but, you know... Definitely not. Like, I, Axiom Verge was actually great. Axiom Verge is phenomenal, uh, but there's I, I was nothing about that problem. game that can't be done on a PlayStation 3, you know? Uh, very true. Like, at, at least nothing that I've seen. There might be something with, you know, particle effects or... Uh, I No, you know, I... No, fuck that. No, no that, that don't, game, don't give it that much credit. That game yeah. could have run on an original PlayStation. 
whatever. I it's think it's probably... super cool though. It's super cool. But that's not the thing that I bought my four or five hundred dollar console for. Straight up, you know. I bet you that game could probably run off of a Raspberry Pi at this point. I, well, I don't doubt that <laughs> at all. It's just I don't know. It's just you know Microsoft has always had a really hard time getting a foothold in in territories outside of the U.S. and you know this price drop, which I think only equates to about forty one dollars U S. It's not going to change anybody's mind about this thing anytime soon. You know the European market has traditionally been pretty much dominated by Sony since the days of the PS one. Not really sure why it just that just worked out that way. You know probably because that's where Tomb Raider was, and you know Brits love them some Tomb Raider. I guess I don't know, which is funny because the next Tomb Raider is a timed exclusive on the Xbox One. Won't oh, be really? won't be coming to PS4 for quite some time. You know maybe that'll help that's the sales of that thing over there because that last Tomb Raider game was pretty rad, man. The I saw bits and parts of it. I didn't actually get the. It's play pretty it, good. I, I don't know. It, 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 you know. It looked nice. It's but... Uncharted with Tomb Raider. You know, nothing wrong with that. That game was that game was fine. You know, Uncharted was basically just kind of the the next step for what Tomb Raider should have been, anyways. It seems to reason that they'd want to ape that formula to make the next proper Tomb Raider game. But that game, that game was cool. You know, it was all right. Um, yeah, Tomb Raider. Tomb Raider's okay. But yeah, I don't know. I don't think Xbox One is gonna. Angelina Jolie. It's, it's gonna be fine. I I I see the Xbox One. I mean, it's here to stay for sure. I mean, Microsoft isn't gonna just fucking shut it down. You know, they're not gonna close shop tomorrow because they're not gonna catch up to the PS4. You know, there's still a fervent, devoted fan base out there to Xbox. You know. Typically, I see a lot of people who were really hardcore in the 360 last time around really yeah. being like the support for the Xbox One this time. Mm-hmm. But counter to that, I saw a lot of people who were 360 fans like jump ship when the PlayStation 4 came out because, you know, it, it was cool. It was a more appealing offer out of the gate at the time for a lot of people, man. And, and, you know, the, that's been kind of fascinating to me a lot because a lot of people that I know, you know, didn't have PlayStation 3s. They were 360, and now they're in this PlayStation ecosystem, and they're going back. You know, people like you. Like, yeah. you went back and got a PS3, and you're like, hey, Mike, you know, what are the games I need to play? What are the games I need to check out? And it's been fun as hell showing you that stuff, too, man. Definitely, that was a, that was a good purchase. You know? Yeah. Not uh, only did I get a really cool deal, you know, on it, but I... I missed out on a lot of stuff. You, you really did. I mean, and, 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 and in that respect, I'm, like, super jealous of you because you get to have your first experience with some of my favorite games ever, like, all over again. It's it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. Some good stuff on the PS3. Good stuff on the 360, too, though. I still have a lot of game playing to do, though. Oh, you know, yes, you I actually do, almost man. wait too much. Plenty, but... plenty to come on this channel. We're going we're gonna to throw some stuff up, but, uh... Oh, um, so, uh, you know... The thoughts about uh, the remote bricking. Oh, so okay, yeah. Uh, the uh, the Gears of War. There's the there's the supposed. Well, hell, it's pretty much announced now, just because all the the bullshit around this this controversy coming out now. There's uh, an HD HD. So yeah, is this this is the first? I guess remake. Well, no, I, I guess The Last of Us would have been the first. I- the first previous gen game, as in PS3 and 360, being remade, like like. That's not including 10 and 10 2 at all, because that's the PS2. Oh uh, well, hell, I can't. I guess no, that's not. No, there's there's a bunch of these now, but I think I want. I think I th- I, th- I saw somewhere. I don't know that, that this game was called Gears of War HD HD. <laughs> Which, uh, How do you do that? Like, <laughs> I don't know. Like, I don't know. I, I don't but understand. I guess it's no different than like these definitive editions of like Tomb Raider or Sleeping Dogs or coming up a uh, Devil May Cry Four coming out or Dark Souls Two. You know, previous gen games have already been remade for. But this is apparently and making like, an Ultra HD version. Yeah. So from what what I can gather of this, this isn't just like a remastering of the first Gears of War. I think this is an actual 
remake, like, from the ground up, which seems weird, you know, hey, let's take the shittiest Gears of War and remake it. I feel like they should have done, like, a trilogy set or something like that. But anyways, there was all this... this there was something this, about that game I just did not... That did not, like, flow with it's me. Too, right? It's too dude bro for me, you know, big, like, muscle-bumping, cigar-smoking, trash-talking buff guys. Like, I'm not into that shit, whatever. I mean, I don't know if it was the third-person view or what, but I felt like in the entire game, when I was playing it, I felt like all I saw was his head and his shoulder, and then I have like this little window where I can actually see in front of me. That's what it felt like to me the entire game. I'm like, oh, I'm the like, oddest complaints about games. I don't know. I just didn't feel <laughs> right to me at all. That's fine. But so, anyways, there were there were people beta testing this this new Gears of War remake thing, and they were under very strict NDA not to talk about it or anything like that. And of course, they fucking did. And they were hit real hard from Microsoft. Their Xbox Live accounts were banned, and the original stories that were out there were talking about, you know, oh, by the way, and as an extra level of punishment, we're going to lock up your Xbox One consoles until further notice. So it turns out that I don't think any of that stuff is true. It, none of that has been substantiated. There was recent stuff coming out where all it is is basically perma-bans from Xbox Live. So these people can never play this console online again. I, it flags the consoles, it flags the IP address and all that stuff. So these people, that's all that's happened for it because... I was going to say, that's a little harsh. To it's very harsh. Be and pulling it, and in it, a it, remote brick if that's even possible at this it point. It brings yeah. into, uh, into, you know, question about people's rights over the things that they purchase and whatnot in a way that I don't think has ever been tackled before, you know. It's one thing to say you can't play this game, but it's another thing to say you can't use the machine that you own to play this game. You know, the, the, the machine itself is locked out. Like, things get pulled down off of PlayStation Network and Xbox Live all the time because, you know, rights exchange hands or studios close down. And there's nowhere for the money to go, so the games come down, you know. That happens. I understand that. I totally understand that. You know, I can't be too pissed about that, you know. Yeah, I mean, and they've got to free up space on their servers and stuff like that. The game's not going to sell them. Yeah, right but I mean, whatever, but that's, a lot of that stuff is still hosted on the servers, though. If you've downloaded it, you still have the right to forever download it. You oh, know, then, things I like, I think that. Silent Hills is the first, like PT, I think that was the first example of something being completely scrubbed from servers forever, you know. Which is fine, because you don't want to have this piece of promotional material out there available to play for a game that will never exist now, you know? it's it's They don't need that. It's Which is a like, damn shame, honestly, because I think P.T., for, even for just what it was, is one of the most amazing horror games ever made. Yeah, I... I Man, that that really scared the crap out of me. <laughs> yeah, it's scary as hell. And the fact that, you know, people can never play that again is kind of a shame. But, I mean, it is what it is, you know? Like, let's not get bent out of shape because this thing for a game that doesn't exist anymore and who knows would have even been worth a damn, you, you can't get anymore. So it's fine. But, yeah, I think I think the if, if it was true that Microsoft was bricking people's consoles about this Gears of War thing, the huge backlash and outcry that started coming from people over this might have caused them to maybe backtrack on some of that stuff a little bit. Once again, though, I don't think it was ever officially substantiated that that's what had happened, but they can't do that. Just simply put, they cannot do that. There's, you know, I understand these people were under very strict NDAs not to talk about this game and whatnot, you know. Ban their accounts. That's fine. That's one thing. That is the proper well, course of action for That's understandable, like that. yes. Yeah, that is that is that's how that should be handled. But to just straight up disable someone's console That's a little too extreme. That's a little is an understatement. And man. actually you know, I don't even think they should have the ability to be able to do that to begin with. That's well, we don't even know if they do. Right. And and if they do, I mean then If they do, that's fucking terrifying because i'm thinking oh well you know we're just gonna i don't think that they'd be malicious like this but just be like oh i'm just gonna randomly brick this console and then they're gonna be like oh i'm gonna pay another like two three hundred bucks to get another uh, that, that would be that, that would be that interesting would be, but no, um, no actually okay. i could see a lot of legal actions with oh that, absolutely though, no you know? i mean you have so, rights i mean straight up yeah that's that's not a thing but uh yeah xbox one sales not so great outside of the u.s not gonna not much gonna amount from their renewed focus on motion controls or anything like that. So, 
I don't, I don't know. I don't think there's anything else really to, to say about that. I mean, I think the Xbox One is a fine system, but it's just not it's not really for me, man. Not for me. At least, you know, there's nothing really too appealing yet. Not yet, or but hell, it. I feel like the same argument could be made about the PS4 at this point, you know. I can't recommend a PS4 to someone. I was just telling this to uh, to my roommate the other day. Like, you know, like uh, Borderlands, the Handsome Collection. That's got the the remaster of uh, Borderlands Two and Borderlands the pre sequel on it. Okay, yeah. he owns Borderlands the pre sequel on the PS3 because he doesn't have, he doesn't have a PS4 yet. And uh, he was like, "Man, we need to we need to play that game." And I'm like, "Yeah, yeah, totally." But uh, you know, I'm kind of on this PS4 kick now. I don't really want to buy that game for my old system. You know, like I'll play it with you totally, but you need to have a PlayStation Four to play it. And as I'm saying that, I'm thinking to myself, "That's ridiculous." It is a much lower bar to entry for me to just buy this game on a system than for him to buy a whole new system and the game that he already owns, mind you, just to be able to play with me. And then I, that got me thinking, you know, I can't actually recommend that console to him, at least not yet, you know. For as sporadically as he pr plays games, like, as it is, you know, and, and, I mean, this doesn't just apply to him, it applies to a lot of people, you know. Hey, go buy a PlayStation 4, go buy an Xbox One. You know, I feel like we're just now starting to get to the point where there are... are enough good games on there to, to justify the purchase of that system, you know? Oh, that's just early adopter woes, you know? That's what happens, you know? This is coming up on, the, like, the third year of a console is when the, you know, there, there starts to be a steady stream of stuff, you know? They start not doing these cross-gen games where they're making them for the old systems as well as the new systems. That's starting to show up a lot less now, which, thank God... That's going to be a good thing as far as development goes, I believe. Yeah, I mean, granted, most of that stuff gets farmed out to smaller studios and port houses and whatnot, but that's still resources that could be spent on making the current-gen games better, you know? So, so yeah, I'm sitting there talking to him about the Borderlands thing, and I was like, you know what, dude? Fucking never mind, you know? I can wait to play Borderlands the pre-sequel for my friend to buy a PlayStation 4, and that's how that's how I'll play that game, you know, I loved Borderlands 2, but the pre-sequel came out after the PlayStation 4 was out, and I just couldn't really justify spending $60 on a PS3 game at that point, that's not what I was interested in at the time, you know, right. bummed me out, like, that, that wasn't, that, that didn't get the PS4 version, or the Xbox One version, like, out of the gate, it totally should have, seeing as how it's not really that far out now, and it's already out on the newer systems, you know. It is what it is, though. I don't know. Um, let's see. What do we got coming out here? Game releases. New stuff for North America. So today, or yesterday, I guess, uh, Witcher 3 hit. People seem to be enjoying that. That sounds all right. Uh, 26. The 26th, my friend. Ultra Street Fighter 4 makes its debut on the PlayStation 4. You have little to no experience with Street Fighter, correct? Oh, that's correct. Okay, well, we're going to have to take care of that. We've got to do something about that. Street Fighter is my all-time favorite game series, completely. Uh, fighting bought... games, and I, I have, haven't ever been good with fighting games. It's fine, man. You know, I don't think you have to be good at them to have a good time, you know? Right. There's still something to be said about a, a, a good drunken button mash fest, you know? Right, that's true. <laughs> that's and, all you right. Know, play, uh, playing Mortal Kombat uh, as... Not so much religiously, but, you know, on, feel, a, on occasion feel, I'm feeling a little better about it all. I just... I feel like you can play that game in a room of people and not be embarrassed. You, you, you do you do all right at that, but... Uh, <laughs> well, thank you. <laughs> no problem, yeah. So, uh, Ultra Street Fighter 4 coming to PlayStation 4 uh, this in, in five days as of this recording. Uh, I'm pretty excited for that. Uh, just because I bought Ultra Street Fighter 4 on the PS3 last year and didn't really get a lot of time with it, once again, because it was on the PS3. And I know I'm making myself sound like some kind of fucking elitist who only wants to play the newest shit. It's just, that just is where my attention was at the time. You know, I'll go back and play the old stuff. I have no problem with that. I'm just really stoked that it's going to be on the system that I'm using the most right now, you know? So that's a, that's a, good, that's a good thing. Uh... Elder Scrolls Online coming up at the beginning of June. Who gives a shit? Uh, I don't think anybody does. But uh, the next big thing.
the uh, that's dead air time. <laughs> yeah, next big thing, Batman, Arkham Knight. Have you played any of the? Uh, you haven't played any of the Arkham City, mm -hmm. Arkham Asylum games. No, 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 no. You need to check those out, man. Your love of Metroid, Castlevania, things like that. You'll like those games for sure. Uh, that's that's probably the next big thing. Uh, uh, same day though, they're kind of shooting that one in the foot by releasing the uh, remastered version of Devil May Cry 4. What a terrible day to release that game. I'm pretty excited for it. Not the best Devil May Cry, but uh, that's a bad day to release that on top of you know one of the most anticipated games in recent memory. I think. Uh, uh, through the end of the year, you know, you got some interesting stuff coming out, but, you know, nothing really worth talking about just yet, not until they get closer up, but, uh, I think that's gonna do it, man, uh, for, uh, the inaugural episode of the, uh, Toasty Robot Games podcast. I feel like we need to come up with a catchier name for that. It's kind of a mouthful. <laughs> kind, of, I mean, kind of a mouthful, but, uh... Well, I mean, it's a work in progress. It is, it is very much a work in progress. Everything that we're going to be doing here is a work in progress, so, uh... <laughs> Bear with us. Uh, we're gonna, you know, we're not like industry professionals or have degrees in any of this shit or anything like that. But uh, we just, we just love just, games and want to, you know, we, talk about it. We just love games, man. Want to talk about it? We got some. We're gonna do some let's plays on the channel. You know, I, we got a couple of cool people that we know who are gonna get involved in some stuff and do some things with us. We got some. Uh, you know, some of the stuff for the really nerdy crowd out there. My buddy here and his Raspberry Pi tutorial videos, things like that. Which uh, I'm, I'm hoping to post up here soon. I'm trying to get them ready. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so. Whenever you're ready, man. We got, we'll got. we be talking about games, movies, comics, toys, you know, all that stuff. I, We know somebody who's pretty much a, a, an authority in all of those things. Um, <laughs> you know, so uh, interesting content going to be on the channel here you know we're going to get a couple of hot cosplay ladies involved in this stuff and uh so just just bear with us here we're, we're going to try to turn this into something special so uh that's going to do it man uh all right good night all right